Well, hello, and welcome to Modular Curiosity episode 14. Yes, episode 14. Hey, today I'm going to try to do a fairly quick one that is in direct response to some questions that came up on the Facebook VCV Rack official user group. And it has a lot to do with this patch that I was working on a couple weeks ago. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this off. And we're going to use just this sound, which is way down here. And it's basically a sequencer. There we go. Turn it down. Driving this filter. Now the question came up with, why do these knobs have a plus and a minus? And I've kind of known that, okay, that's an attenuverter. And I understand sort of how attenuverters work here. But in trying to answer this question, it made me realize something that I, I think I knew in the back of my mind, but I never really comprehended until I was trying to answer the question. And here's what came up. Uh, you'll know that Modular Curiosity is inspired by Robin Vincent's Molten Modular YouTube channel, where he's doing a, a basically his own journey of modular synthesis. And one of the things he mentioned when he was talking about control voltages on oscillators like say voltage per octave, is that this is adding to whatever voltage this knob has. And that just kind of went right past me. I didn't even think anything about it. And I said, well, wait, now I'm realizing, well, wait a minute. That means that this determines the lowest note and any voltage per octave I add will go up. And I also know that attenuators can, for example, Here we go, we'll see, this is the output of an attenuator here. Uh, that's the signal that's coming in. This purple, or actually kind of red, is the signal going out. And if I don't offset it at all and attenuate it fully up, I'm basically just letting the entire signal through. If I bring it back to here, it gets quieter and quieter and quieter until it goes flat. And if I bring it this way, as we know, it inverts the waveform, and you can see it inverting on the scope. The problem is, we're already at zero. If I subtract below zero, nothing happens, which made me realize, oh, to get something to happen, I need to offset it and push it up so I can get some reaction. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by all this in just a little bit. Well, that's what's happening down here. You see, let's turn this up. Uh, first of all, I'm going to put it straight up. And we have that pulse coming in, but it's set not to use any of that control voltage. Now, if I turn it to the right, it's going to add to this filter. So this low note, that's as low as the filter is going to get. If I add it... And what we have is a waveform with a very sharp rise and a slower fall, so, which is why you're hearing sort of a gow, 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 gow sort of sound, because it's, it's jumping high and coming low. Now, I've been playing with these, and I've just kind of, it's never really occurred to me as to why when I push it this way, nothing happens. Well, it's the same thing as that offset. That what is happening is it's subtracting from this setting, but I'm almost at zero already, so there's no place to go. However, however, let's put it back to zero. If I come up, now I start subtracting from that by going the other direction. And notice, instead of a downward filter of gow, 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 it's an upward of wah, wah, wah. And it works because I now have room on this side, on the left side of my setting, which is what I'm controlling over here. If I went to there, it wouldn't have any effect because I don't have any room on the right side of the filter. But if I come to here and give it some room, See, it's attenuating this range here. 
And now if I bring it to the left of center, nothing happens because there's no room to the left of the knob. That finally made sense to me. It's, oh, okay. If I'm way up here, attenuating to the left is like turning it down quickly. If I'm over here, attenuating right is like turning it up quickly. And it doesn't make sense to try to turn it up when it's already up. That's why nothing happens. But if I come to this side, it does happen because I have room. I don't know why that never struck me before. And that brings us to the topic of side chaining. Now, side chaining is basically imagine we have this techno patch, which we kind of do, and I have a very strong bass drum. Now, that sounds pretty darn powerful. There we go. And I want to have this chord. And maybe a, a sequence. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. Now, you'll notice, though, that the bass drum is kind of lost. If we turn them off, it sounds nice and strong, but once you add these other voices, that bass is kind of lost, that punch is lost. So what side chaining is, is we're going to take those two channels and we're going to very quickly turn the volume down and then back up every time that bass drum hits. And the way we're going to do that, let me do it with just the one. I'm going to turn it down here, is the same pulse that's clicking that drum is clicking this side of the rampage. So you can see we have a very fast rise and a fast fall. Now if I just do this, so basically I just send it through, we can see it's pulsing, rising and falling at exactly the rate that the drum is rising and falling. And if I flip it to the other side, yes, we invert the waveform, but it's below zero, so it doesn't do anything to the volume, to the VCA we're plugged into. So what I have to do is I have to offset it to bring it up. And now, let's see, where's my VCA for that? find it now. Let's do this. There we go. There it is. And now we'll do the same thing to our our sequence. Now, maybe I don't want it to shut off fully, so I'm going to attenuate it back a little bit. There we go. So what I've done is I've taken the envelope for the bass drum, inverted it and shifted it, used it as a control to my volume. So that now we have we have these voices sort of getting quieter every time the bass drum hits, which causes the bass drum to punch a little bit more. Now let's add our first voice. And maybe some hi-hats. Now I'm starting to lose the bass drum, so let's side chain it a little bit more.
There we go. So, pretty cool, huh? And I gotta say, I love this because this is something that I just sort of... I guess I knew in the back of my mind, but it didn't really click until having this conversation on Facebook and saying, oh, wait, okay, now I understand because of the way he's asking that question. Yes, why do the attenuators not work when they're on the left side? It's because I have to shift it so I have something to subtract from. And that made the side chaining suddenly make sense. And since this is modular curiosity and it's a journey of me learning things, and this was just a fun thing to learn this week, that's this week's lesson to teach you. So, try side chaining. Try the left side of the filters. Try the left side of anything that has an attenuator. For example, we did the resonator. Look at these. All of these go both directions. So what if we put, say, our structure way up here and attenuate it to that side? Or the damping to here and attenuate it to that side? We've always done this side, made the damping larger or smaller, but we've never gone the other direction. So go give it a shot. Give it a try. See what happens. And as always, stay curious.